What is good? It's your boy. Back at it. We're doing it. Episode 37, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's your boy, Michael Turner. We're in the building, and we're feeling ourselves. Um, hope you guys are having a good week. Yeah, we're doing shit. It is January something something. What is it? The second week of the new year? Have you already fucked up and given up most of your hopes and dreams? Probably. Don't be so hard on yourself. There's always tomorrow. You know what I mean? Lock in, dude. Lock in. We're like 10 days into the year. You got 355 more. Just write the ship. You know what I mean? I haven't really done too much different. I've ran a little bit more than I was at the end of the year. Your boy got off that um, exercise regimen. I'll tell you that when I was on tour. That'll fuck you up. Hard to keep on schedule with that. I got to lock in. I got to figure out how to do that better too. That is one thing with touring. Like figure out how to not be a monster the whole time. Because you're just on a weird ass schedule. You're eating when you don't usually eat. You're supposed to be working out, but you're like, I just got off a fucking five hour flight. Fuck you. Um, so here we are. Episode 35. 35 is a great number. First of all, Kevin Durant. Shout out to our boy. I think that's definitely the most famous 35. I actually don't know any other 35 off the top of my head. He kind of owned it. Uh, 35 is also my favorite number. One of my favorite numbers to bet on on roulette. If you, I don't know if you knew that about me. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier on 33. I like to do the double numbers, but my favorite move is going hard on, I think it's four numbers specifically. The number four, 23, 35, and 19, I want to say. I'd have to look at the, I'd have to look at the board, but it is, um, they are numbers that are, that are literally right next to each other on the circle. If you're a roulette fan, and I just always bet on that pocket. But if 23 or 35 hit, I'm always betting on those two numbers. And I'm going hard on them. They're right next to each other. It's Michael Jordan and Kevin Durant. Strong numbers overall. And, uh, you know, that's what we do. So 35 is actually crucial to my roulette strategy. Like I said, I bet on about thir- a third of the board. And then I press and I aggressively go on 23 and 35. So if like any of those numbers hit that I'm betting, we're going to be fine. But if 23 and 35 hit, we're chilling. Steak dinners. You know what I mean? I've, I've won a couple. Back in Cincinnati, actually, I won a couple, which is great. I was going hard on, I think it was 23 was hitting crazy. When MJ hits, we're all winning. And also like, if you don't like that number, what are we talking about? You know what I mean? Michael Jordan is, it's a great number. It's a strong number. Bet on that number whenever you can do it. Um, but yeah, we're back at it. Um, this is a weird, this is a weird week because usually this time of year, the last two years of my life have been like revolved around like being super excited about the Cincinnati Bengals, being, uh, focused on the first week matchup, all that stuff. The last two years we've not only made it, we made a playoff run one time, or I'm sorry, a Super Bowl run. We lost in the Super Bowl. Fuck you for bringing it up. Um, no, we lost in the Super Bowl the first time, and then last year we went all the way to the AFC Championship. So, like, we were making deep playoff pushes the last couple of years, and that usually goes all the way till the end of the month. So this is kind of weird to not have that and then have to, like, watch, you know, the playoffs without the Bengals. So it sucked. Definitely sucks. We did whoop up on the Browns, though, and we got to 9-8, and eight. and that's kind of crazy to think that we had a winning record considering the year. Like – I um I know this year kind of sucked in a lot of different ways, but like if you told me all these things that happened and they still went nine and eight, it's pretty damn cool. Um, obviously we want to do more, but like the crazy thing is they if they would have just won one of the games against Pittsburgh, they would have been in the playoffs. They end up losing both of them. Um. If they would have won, like, the fucking game against Houston, too, that would have been 10-7. and seven. And that game was the Burrow, last last week that Burrow was healthy, I think. One of the last games that Burrow was healthy. And fucking Tyler Boyd dropped what would have been the game-winning touchdown. Tough break. Not going to hold everything against you on that TB. You're my guy. You're probably never going to be a Bengal again. He's going to probably be moving on. But, um, yeah, like, there was a lot of shit that went down. And most years of my life, like – you know, if you told me that we had a winning record, I wouldn't. I would have been ecstatic. The majority of my life, this was not something that happened. But now we're at a point where it's like, yo, 
we got a Super Bowl opportunity every fucking year. So, yeah, when you don't make the playoffs, it fucking sucks. Um, so that's not great. But they had a historically hard schedule. We'll give them that. I'm here to make a little bit. It's not about excuses. It's about really putting perspective on things sometimes. And at the end of the year, I think it's a good time to look back and be like, damn. If you told me all these fucking things would have happened, I wouldn't have thought they would have gone 9-8. and eight. They had the hardest schedule in the NFL, and they had Burrow only healthy for like six weeks out of the year. They had him for five weeks at the beginning of the year. He was clearly on not healthy. Um, and then they literally didn't have him the last, you know, whatever it was, seven games, something like that, that Browning started. So um, historically hard, though. It wasn't like this is the hardest schedule by far in the NFL. And – um, and then I saw some stat where it was like one of the hardest schedules in the last like three, four years in the NFL for anybody. So probably because our division was historically great too. Never in the history of the NFL since I, th- I've, I heard it was since the thirties. I know it was since a long time ago. I didn't even know that they were keeping track of shit like this back in the 1930s, but, um, that it div- everybody in the division finished over 500. So, you know, we were in the fucking hardest division too. And we didn't have not just our quarterback, Arguably the greatest quarterback in the NFL right now. Obviously, people still think Patrick Mahomes, but your boy is biased. I like my chances with Joey B. So, tough break this year. Um, fucking 9-8, and eight, though. I love that we beat the Browns. Fuck the Browns. Um, I'm actually kind of – I'm not rooting against them, really. I don't care. I don't think they're going to win the Super Bowl, and I wouldn't be mad at them if they won a, a playoff game or something like that, like – The Browns are an organization that their fans are kind of annoying because they think so highly of themselves, but they haven't done anything. It's a very good – it's not a – it is a good fan base in the way that they're like – they don't give a fuck. When they were 0-16, like they still were fans of this team. And it's easy to make fun of a fan base that celebrates the 0-16 by having a parade, but like, I don't know. What the fuck are you supposed to do? I actually don't mind that that fan base still had fun with the shittiest season that they could have. That's still your team. You're still going to go get drunk with your friends and all that shit. Like, I respect that. They are just a weird fan base that, like, the way they talk. Like, I post these videos every week and just kind of talk a little shit about whatever's going on. And all I said to the Browns fan base was, like, check your tone. Just fucking check your tone, dude. Because you guys are talking like you've done things ever. And it is, it is not the case. They haven't. I don't know if they won a playoff game with Baker Mayfield, but they were in it not that long ago with Baker. But, like, you know, this it's a laughable organization. And I'm com- the thing is, when I say this, I'm coming from a Bengals perspective. We are a laughable organization for the most part. We have, we have been a laughable organization. So I know how it was when, like, we got good. It was like, yo, I could talk my shit because we were in the Super Bowl, but, like, I wasn't talking, like, historical shit. Y'all are talking like you guys have, like – it's it's crazy, it's crazy. They organiz- they literally have never won the division, and people and then they're always like, they're backfired to the Bengals fans. It's like, yo, you've literally gone to the Super Bowl and, and haven't won. It's like, bro, at least we went to the Super Bowl. And like, fuck, if you didn't think that Logan Wilson holding penalty on third and goal at the fucking against the Rams wasn't bullshit, then fucking fuck you. You know what I mean? We've we've ran into some tough breaks too, on our end. And also, we're not making that excuse, but I'm saying like, it's not like we. We're in the Super Bowl and got blown out or something like that. Like, we could have won the Super Bowl. We didn't. Some things didn't go our way. Um, So, like, shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, you guys haven't even sniffed an AFC championship. You haven't won the division. And I know they're always like, oh, what does that matter? It it matters. There was Then people are always saying, like, oh, the Bengals haven't done shit. It's like, I know that we haven't won a Super Bowl. For sure. I am 100% aware of that. But the Bengals have also, like, since – Carson Palmer was their quarterback. Like, they've won the division. This is going back to 2004 he was drafted, I want to say. Whatever. But either way, go back to 2005 was the first time that we won the division since 89, something like that, or 90. I don't know. It's a long-ass time. Since 2005, like, we've won the division, like, I don't know, I think it's like five times, six times. Like, out of, you know, 18 years, that's a third of the time if you're doing the math. Um, so like within that time, the Steelers and the Ravens had both won a Super Bowl. That fucking pisses me off. Yeah. And we didn't win the one that we went to, but like, yo, we're no slouch. 
We've been in this shit. Even the Dalton years, that shit was fucking annoying to root for that motherfucker because you knew it wouldn't end up being a Super Bowl run. But goddamn, we weren't that bad. We were consistently fucking doing things. So, I don't know. And then the year that we were really good, he fucking broke his wrist. Dalton actually like was in the conversation for MVP that year. I know he would have won it kind of undeservingly. But like, you know, this year we're looking at like Brock Purdy – Almost won it. He he's not going to because I think Lamar Jackson's going to do it. But like Brock Purdy was going to win it. That was kind of like that year that Dalton was about to win it too. It's like he just had a bunch of weapons and we had a bet the one of the dopest offenses you could imagine. You know, with AJ and like um, shit. I forget who else was the wide receivers on that team, but we had like some weapons. Tyler Eifert was in the mix on that. Um, you know, it was a it was a squad that just had things going. Things were cooking, and so he could have. Found you know fuck you okay we've done some cool stuff all right this is me just venting because we're out of the fucking playoffs just mad just sucks it sucks um <clears throat> obviously you guys know I'm a football guy I've been to fucking went to every road game this year okay so um definitely sucks that they're not in it but like also it is kind of nice to like not have to be emotionally invested every fucking weekend in something. It'll be nice to just kick back and, like, not give a fuck who wins. I'm kind of – I don't love seeing – like, the Ravens are probably the favorite to win the Super Bowl right now. I don't love the idea that they're going to win a Super Bowl and we got to deal with all that shit because that will be in more shit talking next year and stuff like that. But, you know, other than that, I'm rooting for whoever to win. Um, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm actively rooting against them. I'm definitely not rooting for them. How about that? I kind of also I'm kind of rooting for the Bills, um, just because I've always felt like you know we got a weird allegiance to them. We always like I feel like we're very much similar fan bases, similar heartache and all that stuff. I don't mind Josh Allen, and uh, you know we also killed one of their players last year, <laughs> so our bad. So I'll root for you guys to have nice things happen to you, um, and then you know. Next year, 2024, we'll get the off season right. Hopefully do some things, um, make some acquisitions, pick up some people. I'd like to fucking sure up the defensive line, the offensive line. I feel like we are trying to do that every fucking year, but that's what this league is about. I think we got pushed around a lot this year, on the at least in the running game on the defensive line. So stack some boys up, whether it be through the draft or free agency. And fucking Burrow is going to be focused and locked in. It's a revenge tour. At the end of the day, it was the beginning of the year. I was like, yo, it'd be dope if we went to Vegas this year and got a, got a chip for sure. But next year is in Louisiana. It's a fucking Hollywood story. Joe Burrow, the prodigal son, if he ended up taking the Super Bowl team back to Louisiana where he, where he did it with the Bayou Bengals and Jamar Chase, who was his running mate on that team, wide receiver on that team where they where they set records and they're literally heroes down there and they never have to pay for a drink ever in the history of their life. That'd be kind of fun. That'd be kind of nice. So, and if we got to do, if we got to run through with the Ravens as the reigning Super Bowl champion, fucking let's go. We're ready for the challenge, dude. So, I don't know. But, you know, Hopefully we can get some get some things going. The the college football is done too now, which it's weird. The uh, Michigan, I guess, won. I don't know. I'm so out of the loop on rooting for. That's the thing. Now it's the off season. Like now I got to dive into what college basketball and NBA. Um, I fucking love the NBA, but I'm also um, a Suns fan, and uh, that is not looking that cool. They're actually in Los Angeles this week playing both the Clippers and the Lakers. I will be fortunate enough to go to both games. Uh, went to see them play the Clippers last night. I'm, rec- I'm recording this on Tuesday. And um, Tuesday also is a thing that Kansas City people say that is kind of amazing. They don't say that about any other day. It's not Thursday or Friday, but it's Tuesday. Um, and I saw the Clippers and Suns last night. And, uh, you know, just a team that I'm not that – excited about rooting for, which is crazy because, like I said earlier, 35, Kevin Durant, the greatest number 35 there is. Um, you know, he's uh, – they're not playing that great. I wish that he was a better number 35. He's also 
over the age of 35. So, you know, he shouldn't be carrying the load as much as he is. They got Bradley Beal. They got Devin Booker. They got three studs, and they don't look amazing. So that's concerning. Maybe they'll go make another trade. I don't know. I don't think they have any fucking draft picks. Um, so I got to go watch them get their asses whooped. But I'll dive into the NBA. I'll find a team that I kind of fuck with. Um, I always kind of pull for, I like the Miami Heat. Um, I just like oh, how they how they play basketball for sure. And then I'll definitely like a team like the Thunder. I'll fucking dive in on that. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I've always liked SGA, Shea, uh, what is his last name? Gildress Alexander, something like that. I forget what is what the G stands for. Um, SGA, that's what we call him. Um, beastly, generational uh, point guard right now that's playing out of his fucking mind. And then they got that tall, tall honky, Chet Holmgren. I got eyes on Chet in person in Vegas actually last year at the summer league when he was a, a rookie. Just a just a tall man that you can tell has a large wiener. You know what I mean? Just these tall, skinny white dudes where you're like, this, all his protein is going straight to his hog. You know what I mean? This guy's stacking down low. He's got bruised inner thighs and it's self-inflicted. You know what I'm saying? That thing is just hammering. Hammering his inner thighs. So, um, but he's a baller too. He's kind of a beast. And then they got another young guy, um, J, uh, J-Dub, they call him. J. Williams fucking playing out of his mind. So I'll dive into it. I'm not scared to dive into an NBA season and just fucking do it. Cause I can't, cause like watching college football last night, um, I just realized I don't know any of these people anymore. I don't know when it happened. I, th- and I'm trying to think, is it, is it because of the, the, um, fact that they changed the rules and they can like transfer and stuff like that? Or is it just the fact that I'm 37 now? And I can't fucking worry about 19, 20-year-olds. You know what I mean? Like, college sports to me is very... I used to fucking love this shit. Love it. I am an Arizona State Sun Devil fan. I am a UC Bearcat basketball fan more so than... I've always I've always rooted for them, whatever sport they're in, but, like, definitely the basketball team. Um, you know, I grew up like a Texas Longhorn football fan. I used to fucking like really care about who these people were, who the young guys come in were, all that shit, dude. I don't know anybody anymore. And um, I don't think I have the energy to do it. Maybe it's like just where you're at in life. Is that just something that I don't know what age that is where you just stop giving a fuck about the college team? And also, like, I know that there's maybe it's just where my life is because, you know, I know some dudes in their 40s that give too much of a fuck about what these 19 year old kids are doing every weekend on a Saturday. You know what I mean? So it is bizarre, but I'm just, I feel so disconnected from, um, college sports in general. College football is kind of, you know, losing its interest for me. It's hard. It might be also because like this year I was so focused on, I was traveling. I was in different cities. I was doing work on Saturdays. I'm about to sneeze. Thank you to anybody that said, bless me. I appreciate y'all. Um, but the, um, like on Saturdays, I was pretty busy doing shit. So I wasn't like worried about the college games. So maybe that's it too. Like I just haven't watched. Also, it probably matters that my team suck. That's kind of, I'm brushing over that fact. Um, I know I mentioned Texas Longhorn football, but now I'm like, once I went to Arizona State, I kind of had to pick a fucking side. So I don't, I don't fuck with them as much. I love them through the Vince Young, Colt McCoy years. But then I was like, I got to dip. I got to go all in on the Sun Devils. And um, they fucking weren't great this year. And so maybe that's why. You know, maybe I'm beating around the bush here to tell you my team's fucking suck, and that's why I don't love the sport anymore. I'll just I'll be honest with you guys, you know. But, um, yeah, that's, you know, we're, we're in the off season. I'm a sports guy. I'm trying to do some things. I want to do some cool things with the videos, too, and, like, go to – still go to, like, events and stuff. Um and do things for uh, YouTube and stuff like that for tailgates and shit. So if you're listening and you know of any cool events that um, ideally happen in, like, the West Coast or the Southwest uh, portion of America that would be easy to travel, let me know. If it's a fucking crazy little rodeo that you guys know about in your neck of the woods or, um, 
I don't know, like anything weird, I would go to that too. I'm doing some research. I'll definitely like keep my eye out for anything fun. Also, I'll still be going to big events. You know, I'm going to still try to do some things for the playoffs, the NFL playoffs. Um, I know the Niners will play a home game at some point, so I might be pulling up on the Bay and just getting in some uh, tailgate videos for that. That could be fun. Um, you know, so still going to try to do those things for the content. But in the off season, um I'll probably do some stuff for the NBA playoffs again, as I always do. But, like, you know, if there's some funky stuff that you know of in your neck of the woods, or even if it's back east or something like that, wherever you live, let me know. Um, holla at your boy. Could be fun to do it. Could be could be fun. A fucking, you know, uh, all-female clown rodeo thing. What? That sounds fun. I just made that up. I don't know if that's a thing. Probably is. You know what I mean? Um Bikini clad women riding bulls. I'm sure that's going on somewhere in America. I mean, that sounds fun. Throw me into the mix on that, right? Um, heavy set men playing uh, golf. I could go there. Fuck with those guys. You know what I mean? Just a bunch of fat dudes swinging the stick. Let's go. Or just obese dudes playing tennis. You know what I mean? Dudes with one leg playing pickleball. That could be fun. Go down to fucking Venice Beach, start doing shit like that. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. Go pull up on the pickleball boys. So, that's where we're at. Also, let me get this water real quick, dude. Check out your boy. I don't even know where we got this. My girl got this from somewhere. But it's water in a glass bottle. Shout out to Panna. Aqua. Dude, when they spell aqua with a C before the Q. Now you're cooking, baby. Literally says served in the best restaurants. And they've been doing this shit since 1564. It is crazy sometimes. You're like, dude, how much better can water get? And then you get it in a fucking glass bottle like that. And you're like, this is crazy. That's nuts. How much better water can get. It is weird that like, I don't know if I could blind test it, but I know Dasani when I try it. But why is Dasani kind of shitty? People kind of trash, like, Arrowhead sometimes. I'll crush Arrowhead, dude. Fucking Dasani, though? And it's like a Coke product, too. I think Coca-Cola owns Dasani. It's just... What is it? It doesn't even make sense to call it flat, but it is. You know what I mean? Because no other water is bubbly. It's all flat. Should, shouldn't should not be flat. But Dasani is... Dasani is super flat. Dasani is like Taylor Swift's butt flat. You know what I mean? And um, not great. Panna, however, Tuscany. You ever see this? Fucking get it, dude. This shit is great. Um, elevated water, dude. You doing? And also like liquid death. Pretty good water. I don't know how they do it. They just throw it in a can. It's like this is kind of fucking hidden, dude. I've been drinking some. Speaking of drinking crazy drinks, you fucked with this. Um, what is it? Celsius. I, my brother likes it a little bit, and he's had a few, and then so, like, he put me onto it. I guess there's some flavors that people like. I had one recently that I was, like, buzzing. I did not, like, the hard not vouch for Celsius, and this is a boy. I, I crush, if you know anything about me, I like my caffeine like I like my politicians, white monsters, Okay. Give me the fucking, I think it's like a 16-ounce white monster to those things. They taste good. They're like the best tasting ones. They're supposedly zero sugar. I don't even know how that works. I'm not sure how that works. I would think that there'd be some sugar in there. And I'm fine if you're sneaking in there. You don't have to lie about the zero sugar thing. Um, But it's just tasty. It's good. And then I'll do um, some flavored Red Bull. Recently, I've been doing the orange one. They got an apricot something, something. Apricot strawberry i might be making that up but it's orange and uh the yellow one also hits too it's like tropical fruit those are good so i'm like all right well those i know i trust those and then now the celsius one is the one and i don't know why it's better i think it's like supposed to be the healthiest i'm not sure what what is like changing their thing but like and i got the computer in front of me let me see celsius Drink, ooh, look, the first thing it says, Celsius drink, bad for you. Uh, yeah. 
pretty high amount of caffeine. Yeah, that's what I was reading into. It's like they're just jacking you with caffeine. And I think that that's what's going on. Um, and <laughs> they're, they're banned. Speaking of NCAA, literally NCAA is containing ginseng, elk, something, something, and taurine, all of which are currently banned by the NCAA and the Olympic Committee. And the World Anti-Doping Agency. What the fuck are we doing? They're selling this to me at Ralph's? What's going on? That's all, all I'll say is that I drank this one this past week. And, I, yeah, I felt like not great and by the end of it. So, you know, proceed with caution. Hard vouch for the yellow and orange Red Bulls, which I'm sure are not that much better. I think we're kind of splitting hairs here. I think they're all kind of trash for you. But um, I'll tell you right now, I'm out on that Celsius stuff. I've, d- I've done one before, too, but I never thought about how it made me feel. This one was like, I almost had like a head buzz going on. I couldn't even control. So, also, I don't know. So, caffeine does weird shit to me. It's not like it, it actually doesn't jack me up. I've, I, I was stand by this tour. I one time was driving back from LA to Phoenix, I think it was, or maybe vice versa. And I needed to, um, wake up. I was like, just drained and I needed something. Your boy crushed a five hour energy. Literally within the next 12 minutes, I passed out, took a nap on a five hour energy. I don't know anybody that's done that. That might be a record. I don't know. But I, uh, it just didn't hit me like that. Or maybe that was just how tired I was, that nothing was going to do the trick. I bumped a line of cocaine and take a nap before, too. Just fucking heart pounding up my fucking sheets. Um, you know, so I could, maybe that's maybe that's a thing that I need to work on. Maybe that's a personal problem. Um, but caffeine sometimes doesn't hit me. Like, I can crush diner coffee at, like, 1 in the morning, like, late night, hit a diner, talk some shit with the homies, caffeine, I can still go to sleep. So maybe this Celsius had some other things working against me that just were, your boy was buzzing. I don't know. So Celsius do not sponsor my podcast ever. Uh, but also, you know what? If you if you gave me enough money, I'd flip the script so quick. Celsius, you're great. Fuck Fahrenheit. You know what I mean? I'm here for you. But yeah, that was, uh, speaking of drinks, that was crazy. Um, what else has been going on this week? Uh, the, oh, and then last week, what were we talking about with the, um, it was the, I'm putting the hood up for you guys watching on YouTube. Your boy's getting serious now. It was the, um, the Cat Williams video. I just started talking about like briefly last week. And I, you know, what's funny is I thought it was going to be something that was going to go, I don't know if it, 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 it went crazy. Like, let's look at this fucking, where it's at now. Um, Cat Williams interview. This has been a week since it's been out. And it is at, oh, he's on Willie D now, too. Good for him. 39 million. That is insane. Because I don't even think, I don't even think he has videos that are like, even close to that, thirty nine million. The most beyond that was eight months ago. Steve Harvey's, coincidentally, ten million. And then the next one beyond that was they chopped up a portion of the Cat Williams one, cut it down to thirty five minutes of him just going off on everybody. Which actually, that's probably the thing to watch. That's got six point seven million. Beyond that, the drop off is crazy. DC Young Fly got four point eight million. There's no like, there's literally no other episode that is even like hovering around it. And he does fine. These these videos typically get anywhere from like, looks like on the low end you're getting one million on these. Um, Brittany Renner, you would have think gone bigger, but to thirty nine million, that's like crazy. It's crazy how. Also, is really just revolved around truth, unless you think he's bullshitting, which, let's be honest, he's probably lying about a couple things. But I did see some video. One of the things that people thought he was lying about was how he could run a 4240. I saw a fucking video of him running. This motherfucker quick as shit. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think he can do it now. I'm saying he could do it back in the day, maybe not a 4-2, but like, pff, honestly, if you told me 4-2, 
and you could just do under four or five, I'm still impressed. Four two is just your boy clicking a little early. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know, for the video or whatever like that. Um, And I'm sure he, he was bullshitting about certain things. He exaggerated 3,000 books in a year is crazy. That's like, I don't know the math on that. What was that, five a day? Well, like, what are we really talking about? Who has that much time? What were you doing back then? Other than the fact that you were a child and you could have just been reading. And maybe some of them, too, like, well, did we check him? Like, bro, was he just crushing Good Night Moon, like, back to back? You know what I mean? Like, he could have been doing some. He he was also, when he was saying he was doing this, he was a child. You know what I mean? You could crush some books back then. I was watching. I was reading Boxcar Children like that. And there was a big font, too. You know, you could read Call of the Wild with the big font, with the pictures in between it. You know what I mean? So maybe we got to, like, verify some things that he's saying. But the the videos that have gone out this week that have been, like, talking about, like, Ice Cube. He talked about a lot of stuff on um, Friday After Next, which is the introduction to Cat Williams to for most of the world. I didn't know who he was before that movie. And he... Um, the Ice Cube went on and did a whole video. He was verifying what he said. He pretty much said, yeah, everything's pretty true. I mean, he, he also clarified some things, like painted the picture more fully, but he didn't, he didn't at any point say the cat lied. And the other thing is, on the flip side of it, the fact that nobody on the ac accused side, people being accused of things, whether it be Cedric stealing a joke or... Um, you know, just a, a bunch of shit. Nobody's coming out in defense of them. That's what I always think is interesting. There's a lot of people coming in defense of Cat to say like, yo, there's, you know, I don't I don't think he's bullshitting about any of this stuff. Whereas if you've been accused of something, there's nobody like defending these people. Unless I've, I might not have seen the videos, but I haven't seen anything where somebody's coming out in defense of them. You know, there was some crazy stuff though. He had a whole story about going to a Illuminati thing with Ludacris and them offering it like you got to shave your head and shave your sideburns. And do something else weird. I think suck some dick. No, I don't know. That's probably not the one. He had some. There was some <laughs> weird shit going on in these this interview. But he pretty much said he did all that shit, and the and the ludicrous end up getting all those movies. Which you know, hey, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of act uh, rappers that have gone into acting. And of them, I never think to myself, ludicrous is actually a good actor. You know what I mean? That's that doesn't make sense that he's in this many things, you know. Like I actually think Common is actually kind of not bad. Um, there's a couple of dudes that are actually not that bad of actors. Um, you know, like LL Cool J has held his ground for years. He's actually not bad at all. He went from that to that. Um, there's some people that are like kind of decent at the shit, the, and even just entertainers going into things, at going into acting. I think Justin Timberlake is actually pretty fine. I don't mind him in a movie at all. Um, but, yeah, Ludacris isn't on the list of people where it's like, you know who's got range? Ludacris. But, and then, so th I, here's what I do hate about people, though, sometimes. It's like, something like that comes out and, like, cats trying to talk about Ludacris in a way that is, you know, obviously super negative if all that's true and everything like that. You're like, that's kind of crazy. But... Then there's people that are piling on and being like, also, Ludacris wasn't even that good of a rapper. And you're just like, what? all right, there's nuance to these arguments. What he's saying is a whole different thing. Nobody's talking. Ludacris is one of the best Southern rappers of all time. If he's in your top ten, I'm not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't take these th these conversations that happen and then start bringing them down on the whole. Like, go back and listen to some, dude, the fucking... I think the album was called Red Light District, Chicken and Beer, you know what I'm saying? Uh, introducing Myself for the First Time or something, whatever that, that first album was. Come on now. Bars. Straight up bars. Very humorous bars, too. One of the most entertaining rappers of my lifetime. Don't ever say, you know what I'm saying? You could talk your shit about Ludacris uh, if if the things that Cat is saying is are true. Say your shit, but like, you know, don't don't come at the bars. Don't do that. Then you then you sound silly, and uh, you know it's just it's just crazy stuff. Twenty twenty four is starting off with a lot of truth being told, and it's kind of dope to see. You know, I hope people keep keep speaking on these things. It's crazy because like we as a society, we've always known. It's funny because you always know these things are happening. Like 
All right, so Mel Gibson's a crazy motherfucker, right? I'll never, like, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, you know, if you really listen to what he said about the Jews, it's kind of more nuanced than that. Like, I don't like what he said on that shit. That shit was wrong, all that stuff. But you do, if you watch some interviews that he's done, I've seen some, what is it, like, TikToks, or I don't know if it's on YouTube or something like that, but there's some interviews that he really, like, I think it's fair to say that he lost a shit. And he, um, like, straight up lost his mind. And a lot of people in Hollywood lose their mind. They lose it, bro. Whether it be being paranoid or something like that. But there's clearly a different level of this. I'm here in L.A. This shit is, that's why sometimes I'm like, yo, I'm cool with being, like, mid-level famous. Because there's a different level when you get to that certain level, you just go to different parties and you're shaking different hands and you're rubbing different elbows. And that also, like, the thing is, as big as you can get in stand-up, you can make real good money doing stand-up comedy and all that shit. And um, I don't think that we ever get to run in those circles, which is probably good. Unless you're like the Eddie Murphys, Kevin Hart. But, like, the thing about the, the Kevin Hart shit, like, Kevin Hart was never, like, somebody that people were like, yo, he's one of the best stand-up comedians of all time. Nobody, I don't think, ever said that ever. If you did say that, you're uninformed on stand-up comedy. That motherfucker is one of the... He's just a great comedic actor. He's a great comedic performer. He's funny. He elevates movies. He's been... He's a very talented person. But so, like, he's, like, not somebody that... he, Him and Eddie... Eddie Murphy, too. Like, he is, to me, Eddie Murphy... You. You could say is one of your favorite stand-up comics of all time, because of the two specials that he did. He clearly he started as a stand-up. He went into SNL, all that shit. Like, um, he's he's probably a different level, but he also, on top of everything, is just a amazing performer, just a crazy level of talent. So those are the levels of comedy that, like, when you get to that level of fame, I guess so. Stand-up can get to that point to a degree, but for the most part, like. You know, Bill Burr is probably the height of stand-up. Dave Chappelle, I'm sure, I'm, I would think Dave Chappelle might have been invited to some of those weird parties. I don't know, but they seem like dudes that probably avoid bullshit like that. Stand-ups, we're just gonna do our thing in our world. So maybe I, maybe I take that back. I'd like to get as famous as I can be in this. I'd like to get right. I'd like to get to the level of fame right before being invited to the Illuminati parties and having to really question if I wanna you know, blow a dude for my career. Because that's when it gets tough. When you really, you know, when the it's on the table, you got to try to figure out what that dollar amount is. I thought about this because the interviews like this and shit like that, and then I saw like Gary Owen was talking about how he's, he was in a meeting where pretty much the dude was insinuating like suck my dick for, I don't know if he was saying for the role or for the million dollars. It's, you know... <laughs> I definitely have tried to be like, is there a dollar amount for me? I don't think I can do it. I don't know if that makes me <laughs> homophobic or something, but like, I just don't. Th I think that is is fucked up to say it. I don't know why. Is it is this, is this fucked up to say? But that shit is disgusting to me. I couldn't suck a dick. I don't think I could do it. Which is wild because I've watched people suck dicks for a lot of my life. I've beat off to it. Obviously, these are women that I'm watching suck a dick, but I can't. I've never watched it and been like, I could get down on that. That shit looks horrible. I'm not somebody that like, yeah, but also like, look, I don't like pickles either. You know what I'm saying? If you've ever eaten with me, you've ever eaten at a, at a diner with me or at like a, a sandwich spot with me, bro, you're getting my dill pickle. If that's what you fuck with, that's what you fuck with. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like the most dick shaped thing I'll fuck with is, I, you know, corn dogs are dope. Hot dogs in general are dope. But I don't like eggplant. I'm picky that way. So, I don't know. I like peaches, though. You know what I mean? But I don't know if that makes me problematic or not. I'm just being real. I don't even think there's a dollar amount for me. Because I'd just be like, I don't think I can do this, dog. <laughs> I just don't. I'll th you want me to throw up? I'll throw up. Right here. Just if You know what I'm saying? Just give me the 20 mil. Just let me. Just let me get in the movie. Tough stuff, though. These Illuminati parties sound crazy. And what's it? Not, I'm always trying to figure out, like, what's the is the music popping? You know what I'm saying, like, what's the vibes like? The the vibes must be crazy for for the conversations even to be able to get to that point. You know what I'm saying, like, for them to be able to be like, "Yo, come in this other room with me." 
Is it huge, big ass millionaire mansion parties and shit like that? The more I think about it, the more I do want to actually. I take back everything I said. I want to get to the point where I'm invited to one of these things just to get eyes on it. But then I'm already implicated. I don't know. And then there, and then the other thing, like the theme that they were saying, is everybody's like been made to wear dresses or skirts and shit like that at one point or another. I don't know. I mean, what's his name? Harry Styles didn't seem like anybody had to trick him into doing that shit. And honestly, that motherfucker looked pretty as shit. You know what I'm saying? I could, I could see. I don't know if Timothy Chalamet's gotten to that point, but like, if he did it as a as a man to another, I'm like, I'm not hating on him because of that. That's a pretty motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? It would. It'd behoove me if he didn't at some point put a dress on and be like, yo, this is crazy how pretty I am. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and then some of the stuff, like, it's funny thinking, like, so just because you put a dress on, you think they got, like, the upper hand on your whole thing? Is that what's happening with the dress thing? Because, like, you know, fucking, I don't think any less of Martin Lawrence because he made Big Mama's House multiple times. I think that he, he that guy went crazy though. I f- always feel bad about that, but that movie's pretty fucking funny. But Cat Williams did bring up a good point because <laughs> the sequel, he's like he had to go back as Big Mama, and he's like, "Yo, he's just an FBI agent going undercover. Like he didn't have to be this old grandma again. The grandma is not the only angle for undercover, which is a very funny observation. That's the the biggest. Thing. I didn't watch the whole thing because it's like almost three hours but the first of all the craziest thing about the cat williams interview is you can just watch the first 30 minutes and it's like literally from the get-go shannon sharp has no control over the first 30 minutes he's like yo that went crazy as fuck he had to like take a breath and be like yo you gotta stop drinking and cat's like bro i haven't even taken a sip since you don't want to drink it over there i'm over here talking this shit it's it is a Interview that should be seen by all. I, like, the, I think, I was telling you, though, they're on the, the, the YouTube, there's another one. They look like they edited it down, and it's just, it's called Cat Williams Go, Goes Off, and it's 35 minutes. That's probably all you need to watch. The, the whole interview, though, is really interesting if you like Cat Williams, because he's uh, talking about some shit, like talking about how he grew up, how he got to where he was, all that shit. But um, Cincinnati legend, first of all. Born and raised in Cincinnati, and then he went to, I guess, Dayton, and then um, Florida, end up in Miami, something like that. But um, 39 million views, and that's six days ago. So that'll probably get up to like 50. It's crazy. It is it is a moment, for sure. That's, that's one thing that just happened this week. It's like, it's funny when things happen, and you're like, damn, that'll be something that we talk about. Or you'll always you'll always have that to call back to, um, and it's crazy that it's just a fucking YouTube interview like that. We're also like Shannon Sharp is easily one of the worst interviews of all time, and like I know he wasn't he didn't go to school for journalism. I actually don't like hate on people like that because he's not. We don't pay you like if you watch that and and you're like, yo, Shannon's gonna ask him the real hard hitting questions. Like there were so many times in the interview where he could have pushed back on Cat or he could have been like, Yo, you can't be saying just saying that shit out of pocket or like he said he read three thousand books a year. It's like, bro, how I would I would have been like, let's let's break that down a little bit. What were we doing? Any he had zero follow up questions for anything. So Cat was just like and that's probably why Cat knew he could just do that. He could just run through it. But um yeah. Just a trash interview. With and and it's also it's it's interviews like that where you really respect a good interviewer. A good interviewer is phenomenal. And they ask the right questions like that. Like I've been wa- I've been listening to um because I don't even think you can watch it. I don't think it's on um on uh YouTube or anything, but Rick Rubin has a podcast. And it's not even really that he interviews these people, but he has a conversation with them. But the way that he leads the conversation is always very good to me. I'm always like, damn, I wouldn't have even thought about that question. The way that he heard that and he he asked that question from it. I always love a good interviewer, for sure. Um, certain people are just phenomenal at that. Say what you will. Larry King, I think he's finally dead now. I don't know. He could be still alive. That motherfucker was a good interviewer. You know what I mean? Howard Stern. Howard Stern is a 
amazing interview. That's what I always say about um, if you ever have a celebrity that you want to know more about, Google their name and see if they have a Howard Stern interview. And if they do, it's the best interview you'll hear from that person. Because he, he's able to get a level of truth out of them that r- rarely anybody will ever be able to get. And a lot of times, they d- I don't think the individual goes in there thinking that they're going to get that truthful, but Howard Stern kind of just creates that level of truth. It's very impressive. He does it in a way that's very, it's direct, but it seems like you're in a safe space to be able to talk about this. Meanwhile, it's like one of the most popular media forums in the fucking world. And uh, yeah, if you want to really like dive in, like I know there's one about David Spade that he talked more about Chris Farley than he'd ever talked. Um, I thought that was a good one. There's one, I'm obviously a huge Jay-Z guy. There is one about um, where he gets Jay-Z to really talk about his upbringing a little bit more in a way that I'd never heard and then about his relationship with his father and he tells a story about <clears throat> like a time when he tried to rekindle his relationship with his father I'm like that's crazy he got that but on the other side of that I also think that people go to the Howard Stern interview knowing that they need to be more truthful than they've probably ever been in any other interview so they probably go in there with a the mindset so it goes twofold but there's something to be said about a good interviewer. And Shannon Sharp is not that. Zero pushback on anything the cat was saying. But one of the most wildly entertaining interviews you'll ever see. Fucking 39 million views. You know what I'm saying? So, check that shit out. And um, it is, it's, it's, the truth stuff is, has been interesting to see. I think that we're just ready, like, as a society for people to just break things down like that. Like like I was saying, like, we all know Illuminati shit is, I don't know, Illuminati is such a weird thing that it's such a blanket idea of what it is. But what I know is that there's some fucking weird levels of um, society that happen in cities like this. Like, I always think when I'm walking in New York City, like, the, like you're walking by all these vi- these buildings in Manhattan. And it's like they always say, like, there's, what is it, 8 million people? There's 8 million stories in that city, on that island in Manhattan. And you walk by all these buildings. And I'm always like, that's crazy that there's some shit going on in this building at one level or another, at one, in one room, one level, one corridor of this building that is fucking probably crazy. There's a level of fucking weird that's going on. And it could be super secret society type shit that's like elevate like you know fucking skull and bones type shit some weird shit like that like the masons or something like elite level of wealth that we don't know about it could also be just some dude that has an internet connection that understands the dark web that's like either selling some fucked up shit or like doing some fucked up sexual shit or like some fucking dude there's some motherfuckers i'll tell you right now i don't know enough about uh like how to get into the dark webs but i guarantee you That there's somebody in this country right now that is filming, like, the the torture of fucking animals and putting it on the dark web. And there's a bunch of people that are watching it every week. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I can't confirm that. I don't even know how to look it up. But you know what I'm saying? There's some people doing some fucked up shit on the internet. And uh, it's always, like, weird walking around Manhattan. I always think about that, like, how this is fucking going down. And it might not be going down right there in the city, but there's some people that have experienced some weird shit in that part of the country that live there. And in L.A., it's fucking, you know, it's rampant. I don't know what's going on. I live by this neighborhood that um, the um, the mayor, like the mayor's home. I don't think the mayor actually lives there. But, but if the mayor wanted to live there, the mayor of L.A., they have a house that's like not far from me that they... I've walked by it before, and it's a crib. It is a crib, and the that house is there. I only say that to say, like, to paint a picture of like what the neighborhood's like. Like, that's one of the houses there. I don't even know the the value of it. It's probably up up over ten million for sure. Um, there's definitely some houses that are like up to like fifteen twenty over there, just huge. But then, like on average, like every one of them, I'll walk to this street that has a bunch of coffee and shops and shit like that. And on my way on the walk, if I just look down on Zillow, sometimes you'll see it's like on average, every house is like five, seven, 
you know, maybe upwards of 10 million, some of the nicer ones, some of the bigger lots. And you're like, you don't know what the fuck is going on in those houses, on those parties that they have and shit like that, on those gatherings that they have. Um, and those are probably not even like the real ones because there's some shit in the hills and shit, like some tucked away shit you don't even know about. You got to get invited to. Like, I've, I've I've only lived here four years. I'm not like as plugged in, but I know some homies that have like been invited to some weird shit. And I'm like right by Koreatown too. And I'm telling you, some late night Koreatown shit. I don't even know what's going on over there. And that's actually probably more... It's definitely not legal, but it's probably more, like, accessible to a guy like me. You know, that's not even, like, there's always some seedy shit going on in a city like this. Los Angeles, California, like, you're saying that's, like, you could argue some of the sketchy shit in the world is going on here. So, it's always fun to get, like, glimpses of that and also be reaffirmed that, like, it's definitely going down, something like that. Like, you know, you just don't know. You just don't know what it looks like. And... Just like I talked about earlier, like, I want to get to a point where I'm right below getting invited to that. I fucking, I take all that back. I want to get to a level of success where I'm just, holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Slide me the fucking group chat. You know what I mean? I'll pull up. I'll get eyes on it. I'll dip. You know what I mean? I might have my mom drop me off and tell her to just pick me up in an hour. You know what I'm saying? Some simple shit like that. Speaking of crazy parties that go a little above and beyond... Um, you guys know I love movies and shit like that. Just watched Saltburn. This is something that, like, first of all, the last week or week or so, the black community has been caught up on the Cat Williams stuff. Most of us on the internet have been caught up on the Cat Williams stuff, but definitely the black community for sure. In the white community, if you've got a homie, they've probably recently told you you should watch Saltburn, and they've said something vague about it. They're like, "Yo, it's crazy, bro. Movie's wild, dog." My co- my not my cousin, my brother. My brother hit me up right after he saw it. He said, Saltburn, whoa. That's all he said. And it but he didn't say good or bad really. And I should have probably asked further questions. But typically when he reacts like that, like that's a good thing. And then I hadn't like I don't know. I got my homie, my best friends did the uh trailer for it too. So but he usually tells me if it's if it's really good that I should see, I usually get that from him. I didn't get that from him. But also, if it's really bad, I get that insight, too. It was neutral. I saw the preview, though. The preview looked crazy, right? The trailer looked crazy. That's what the that's what the job of making the trailer is. It's to incite interest. It's, you know, it's a marketing campaign, shit like that. Didn't really tell you what the movie was about, too. I'm here to tell you, as a person that has watched Saltburn, if you haven't watched Saltburn... Don't consider this like a spoiler alert. This is just an alert. This is me alerting you. You don't have to watch this movie at all. This is, uh, there's a scene in that movie where there's a dude that pulls his dick out and fucks the dirt for like, I don't know, over a minute for sure. You don't got to see that. And and I'm only telling you this, and and I'm telling you, this doesn't ruin the movie or nothing. I'm telling you this as a, this isn't a spoiler warning. This is a warning. That I wish somebody had told me. I wish it was communicated to me. My homie that did the trailer. Gabe, you could have fucking hollered at your boy. Hit, hit me with a ping and just been like, yo, just a heads up, there's a scene in this movie where his he is dicking down a pile of dirt. Because then I would have been, as a 37-year-old male that has other shit to do, maybe some other movies in the queue, I could have skipped this one. I could have been like, nah. But what happened? I didn't get any of that information. My brother says, whoa. Then, then... Didn't sound like a bad whoa. Whoa is usually like, yo, crazy. Which is, I don't mind that. Another person, my girlfriend's friend, she was the one that pushed us over too. Because I didn't mention this to my girl at all. And she went out one night and she came back and she said, my homie told me she, uh, we got to watch this movie. And she said, Saltburn. And we hadn't talked about it between us at all. So I'm like, all right. So now we got two independent people kind of hyping the movie. And uh, and then all you see on the internet, this is like, I don't know, I, I watched it like a, within the last week, and the internet talk was kind of just like, yo, this is crazy. But I didn't, I didn't dive too deep into it because I didn't want to like, you don't want to know too much. A crazy movie, you th- there's clearly something that you might be told that could ruin the whole perspective on the movie when you when you want to get fresh eyes on it. But I'm I'm telling you, 
I wish somebody would have told me that there's a scene where there's a dude fully erect in earth, just dick in the dirt, ass out, and it's playing. And also, like, I I have a roommate. So, literally, I'm chilling here. I'm watching this with my girl. Also, like, you know, to cut to the chase, not a good movie, I don't think, at all. And I we talk more about that, but this scene happens. I got a roommate. I wish I got this warning. If you live with somebody else, if you were thinking about, hey, maybe we'll watch this with the family. Don't do that. Don't do that. With the roommate, if you got a roommate and you're about to watch this shit, holler at your roommate. Get the schedule that they're working with. See if they're going to be coming home at any point during the window in which you might be viewing this film. Because of all the moments that my roommate could have walked in, he literally pulls up, he's opening the door, and I'm I'm sitting here watching this fucking movie, and this dude got his whole dick out, putting his dick in the, in the earth, dicking down some dirt, man on manure type shit, fucking some fertilizer. What the fuck is going on? So... And I'm sitting, and then I'm turning around. He he walks in the living room. I'm on the couch. He's like, "What what what's going?" On? He's you know, if we're watching something, he's a big movie guy too. He's like, "What you watching?" I'm like, "Bro, don't judge me from this moment alone. This is crazy." He literally looks at the screen. He got a man's ass out in a fucking what? What? And I think he came. It looked like he came. You know what I'm saying? He had the body shivers, like he thrusted. To fruition. And now I got to look at my roommate like, yo, it's symbolism, dog. It's symbolism. That's what everybody on the internet is like, yo, if you don't understand the symbolism and salt burn, yo, fuck that. Okay? that's I've seen, I know symbolism. All right? I read The Great Gatsby. I don't remember Nick Carraway having to fuck some dirt. Okay? Just to let us know the wealth gap in America at the time. This is crazy. Not a good movie. Be, like, beyond that, not just not a good movie. It was, um, which is crazy because it was good acting, like decent performances, if that makes sense. But the movie's just a mess. I like the kid too. I forget his name, like, uh, but he was in Banshees of Inisherin. Good actor. I like him. The other kid that was in it was decent, not bad. Rosemond Pike was in it. She was probably the highlight of the movie. She was great. Um, and then for like five minutes, Carrie. What's her name? Mulligan? Or there was another good actor in it, There was, which was weird because she was only in it for five minutes. And it was like, that seemed like a waste of her performance. But um, like decent little individual performances, but the movie's shit. It's not good. And I'm usually like open-minded to things like that. Also, like there was another, that I'm talking about digging down some dirt. There is another scene that I'm, I'm, Th- that is even more disturbing that I don't even... It ha- happens before that in the movie, too. Th- that's another thing that I would want to warn somebody, but that kind of... I almost throw up just thinking about it. But... Ooh, I don't... Yeah, the movie's not good. There's two things that happen that are fucking disturbing. One of them is, if I told you that this dude fucked some dirt, wouldn't you be like, you know what, that's probably not a movie for me? That's all I would have wanted. That's all I would have wanted. And that's not even that's not even the worst thing that he does. That's the other thing too. There's like two other scenes that are like, yo, what? So, you're welcome for that. Because the other thing I think spoils it a little bit more, and I don't want to do that. I'm just telling you straight up, he fucks some dirt. And if you are into that, if you hear that and you're like, I could see that movie, check the movie out. Check the movie out. Dude's got a hog on him too. You get to see his dick. He's got he looked looked like he got he's hanging like Chet Holmgren, you know what I mean? He's got the OKC Thunder between his thighs. Um. Otherwise, I did. Uh, what was the other thing I did? Oh, I watched another movie to cleanse the soul too. Here's a here's a good suggestion of a movie that's on Netflix right now that you could watch that maybe a lot of people my age or younger probably have never seen. You, you might have though. It's a classic, and I'm just saying I'd never seen it. I never watched uh, The Sting with Robert Redford and a um, bunch of good actors from back in the day, but I'd never seen it. And uh, I just watched it earlier today. It's great. 
it's like an old school Ocean's Eleven type deal. I always knew, like my dad loved this thing. People have always talked about this thing. I understand that it's kind of weird actually that I had never seen it. But I don't know. It's just like it's those old movies. Sometimes you just, you never just sit down and watch it. But it's on Netflix right now. And if you're like me and you just never seen it, it's just a good movie. It's clean. It Like old movies sometimes they don't hold up. It holds up. Um, it's fun. It's old school. Obviously, I think it was 1972, maybe something like that. Um, it's just fun. Just a bunch of handsome fucking actors back in the day just cooking. I mean, there's some dude they don't fuck with that does some shit earlier in the movie that you're like, fuck that dude. They're just like, let's get him back. I'm like, let's go. So that was fun. Sometimes some old movies don't hold up. But old movies that do hold up are always really impressive to me. Like, I've, like I'm sure there's some Hitchcock movies that are just fucking good. There's a region he's amazing. North by Northwest, I remember watching when I was like, yo, this movie fucking, this fucks. This movie, it moves, it's clean, it's it's good paced. If you've never seen North by Northwest, hard vouch for that. Um, Godfather, obviously, is a longer movie, but it's just fucking good. It's just fucking good. Um, and also, like, I had never seen that till like, within the last five, six years or something. So I finally like, got around to that, too. That was one of those that just wasn't on my list of uh, primary, uh, you know, top. I, it should have been. It should have been. But I just never, I just never watched it. So those type of movies. But then there's also some that don't hold up, too. I don't know if you ever saw, like, Midnight Cowboy. That just didn't do it for me. That was a weird one. And then I'm sure people, maybe you guys love it or something. Just didn't do it for me. But it's one of those movies where people are like, yo, classic. Not, not, no, not for me. Um, John Voight, Dustin Hoffman. A couple of iconic scenes, but the movie as a whole, what the fuck is it? Um, otherwise, what else? Is it? Oh, you know what? You guys can obviously always watch me here. Checking with your boy every week. Um, but you can also watch me this week. I did lesser known characters with Chappelle Lacey and Joel Jimenez, my two buddies. Um, they do a podcast where we break down music. So if you ever want to do a deep dive on some music stuff, they ask a lot of questions about some shit. Um, one of my favorites was like, what was the anthem of your youth? We did a deep dive on atmosphere. If you know anything about me, I fucking love atmosphere. He just dropped, actually, they just dropped a new album that I actually was listening to. It's weird. You know, some of your favorite rappers, they don't age all that well, but he's always got a couple of songs that I still fuck with. Um, but when I was in my teenage years and I discovered atmosphere, come on. And now in hindsight, I realize it's funny, like listening to hip hop now. And it's like a lot of bunch of it's emo. It's, um, there's a lot more emo rap is a thing, right? Like a lot of people just talking about their emotions and shit like that. Atmosphere back in 2000, 2001, 2003, all that shit. When he was dropping those albums, was so far ahead of his time on that. Literally paved the way for what we now know as what is popular rap. Like, straight up, if he just came out 15 years later, he'd, be, he'd even be more popular. And then the weird thing with Atmosphere is that he's actually super popular with the younger generation because of songs that came out, like, way later in his career. So that's always weird. I think there's a lot of people that like him, like, the last 10 years, 15 years of his career, where I was like, yo, I've been into him for about fucking... 25 years which is crazy to think about or 20 yeah 23 years something like that was when i discovered who he was so um but we do, it's a it's a dope podcast with my homies um chappelle lacy is actually the roommate that walked in on me watching that dude fuck the dirt so that's fun but um yeah so check that out uh, it's up on youtube and then it's also on wherever you listen to podcasts wherever you listen to this right now fucking look it up lesser known characters um but yeah i'll be back next week i appreciate you guys rocking with me um i've got some dates coming up right now i'm going to be in san diego at the end of uh february and then in march i'll be in st louis and then in april i'll be in indianapolis so i got to get all those dates up on turnercomedy.com but if you're in any of those cities holla at your boy if you're in a city that you want me to be performing in dm me holla at your boy tell me where i should be at and uh let's keep momentum going here in 2024 peace out